Dear K-Lab, Thank you for disappointing the resurrection of my favorite character. My disappointment is immeasurable, and my day has been ruined. From yours truly, the Chair Smasher. I'm gonna save money, fly over to Japan, head to K-Lab's headquarters, and smash all of their chairs because I am f***ing evil! Alright, what is going on you guys? This is your boy the Deathmasher and welcome back to yet another Bleach Brave Souls character showcase and today we are going to be showcasing my Max Transcended T20 Resurrected 3rd Anniversary Ukiora, otherwise known as Tercera Etapa Beyond Resurrection Ukiora, however you guys uh, want to call him. He was basically the third anniversary character for that year and uh, he basically got his resurrection this month and I'm not gonna lie I'm pretty disappointed with how they did him although they did fix up a lot of the issues that he had previously but it's just not enough because for starters let's just take a look at what uh, he had prior to his resurrection so hold on real quick lads here is Okiar before he got his resurrection now this character was the very first no affiliation killer that we have ever gotten into the game and he was a very good one despite having this type of killer for his time even though there was no content to use this killer on since we had no droplet zone no inheritance zone and no other co-op content to even use this killer on and ever since then um we basically have a lot more content to use this killer on such as guild quests epic raids sometimes inheritance trials and a lot of content so like it's become a much better killer now i won't say that it's as good as soul reaper hollow or ronker but it's definitely a lot more useful to have nowadays and i have no problems with this killer whatsoever so um yeah that being said he had strong attack damage of 25 percent instead of strong attack recharge keep in mind that we were still in an era where not everyone was getting strong attack recharge so it was either one or the other and uh, the skills, he didn't have that many skills for his time either. Like, it was basically 6 plus 7 uh, basically being occupied by the Enhanced Link. And the kit he had, he had basically weakening on his entire kit. Not a debilitating one, but at least he was able to inflict weakening for those couple seconds. And he basically had a lunge on his SA1, a boost on his SA2, which also gave out shields. He was the very first character to be able to do both at the same time. And then the third strong attack was a charge all around him. Although once you completely charge it, it's 900 radius. So it's not the best strong attack that we have. And his SA2 does lack quite the range since it is all around him as well. And the skills, he had only a 20% bruiser, devastation 40%. Frenzy plus one, Enhancer, Sprinter plus one, and Poise. So like, for the time in which he came out, he was a very good character, but he just basically fell off very hard when we basically started getting units with Havoc, Berserker, God Kit, and uh, yeah, over time, this Ukiora just basically, you know, went down the ranks in terms of just being a good character. But now, here we have him with his resurrection and Thankfully, he did pick up strong attack reacher's time of minus 10%, which is very good. At the very least, now he basically has an infinite boost and will be getting his strong attacks back a lot faster that way. Now, skill-wise, unfortunately, um, the only thing that they really did give him was a 20% Berserker. So, now added with the Soul Trait, it's now 45%, so he does do good damage, but here's the thing. That was it. That was all that they ever gave to this Ukiora. Just Berserker, no Havoc, no nothing, no changes to the skill, which, in my opinion, is a big disappointment. Now, okay, sure, Flyzen did not get Havoc either on his resurrection, but let's be honest here. Flyzen already had a very good kit, so if he did not get Havoc, sure, it was still a disappointment, but, but he definitely did not need Havoc to even be amazing again since he just had the insane some 50 lunge in front and then the sa3 was still full screen just the sa2 sucked but i can understand why people 
would complain about it. This guy, on the other hand, needed Havoc just because of the fact that he doesn't have a full screen third strong attack. And guess what? He still doesn't have it, which is very disappointing. I'm disappointed at Caleb for just literally screwing him over. Like, it's an anniversary character. Like, normally you expect anniversary characters to be top tier OP. And they gave second anniversary Ichigo a very good resurrection. And I was expecting this character to get the exact same treatment. But no, they decided to just give him Berserker. And they did not give him Havoc because for some stupid reason, the f <laughs> Resurrections always have a skill cap of 7 instead of increasing it up to 8 and 9. And with every new character getting innate skills, it just makes no sense. It just makes no sense. And I'm very disappointed with how Caleb did this character. Come on, man. F*** you, Caleb. F*** you. That being said, I'm still gonna showcase him again. So, yeah. I'm an old Kira fanboy, so may as well get this over and done with. I still enjoy this character now, even more now thanks to the resurrection, but I just can't help but feel disappointed. But anyways, here's my copy, Max Transcended, T20, I gave him full stamina damage boost, and long stride. he has 500 SP on the extra stat boost slot, that is all you need to know, I have the Soul Trait unlocked. And uh, yeah, we're basically going to be doing uh, two builds this time, it's going to be the uh, Sinkaisen build, so that way we can get the best damage out of Okiora, and then we're gonna go for a hybrid recharge slash strong attack damage based build. So let's get into it and uh, starting it off directly with the Kazan build. Here we are, Tail, Bait, and the Chair all with 30% SP. The links, we have two Sinkamon Aizen links. This power one has a level 5 SP. And then we have ourselves a 5 of 5 Tag Team Ichigo that has 500 SP on the extra stat boost slot and has level 5 SP. And with this, the total um, Berserker count is now at a good whopping 125% with a full stamina damage boost of 81%. So this is basically going to be how hard Okior is going to hit with the strong attack damage alone. And uh, yeah, just to be safe, we're also going to be bringing with us Nanao because she does boost on the second strong attack. So in the event that we do uh, run out of the boost with Okiora, we can just switch to Nanao, save time, and basically, you know, showcase the character a bit more properly. But anyways, let's get into the run and showcase this man. Alright, here we are in IZ, and oh, look, we have underground mobs. It just means that when we go for the hybrid build, I'll give the uh, Zeta pill over uh, the uh, bait or the chair. This depends on which one. Anyways, let's see the damage he does without the boost. So yeah, SA1... 27k, very good, very good. At the very least, Ulkior has that very good lunge now. It's not anywhere near as good as Flyson's, but it is better than the average uh, 475 radius lunge that any unit uh, without Havoc has. So yeah, it's pretty good. SA3, easy 18k, not that bad. Again, the damage he does is good. Like obviously the resurrection did uh, you know make this character good. And keep in mind, this is all without killer. So like, when we showcase this character with Killer, it's going to be even better. But now, hold on, let's just wait for the Tron attack to come back. Okay, we got the Tron attack back. Let's charge it up and see the total damage that we do without the boost. 35k. Very, 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 very damn good. Now, the SA2. 36k. 31k with the SA1. That is very, 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 very good. Now, we'll have to wait a bit to uh, showcase the SA3, but fortunately, we have ourselves... And then now, in case we do need to, you know, have an emergency backup. But anyways, 20 to 21k. Oh, with the boost on the SA3. Now let's switch to Nanao, boost up, and get to charging that SA3 now. So hold on. Ah, clean 41k. 41k. I definitely think that we can do higher numbers once uh, no affiliation mobs are going to be the enemies. Now, unfortunately, we still don't have that many ICs or droplet zones uh, in which no affiliation mobs are the enemies, but fortunately, we do have ITs in which no affiliation mobs are present, so that's still pretty good. And look at that. Look, you're just one shot at Halibut, but then again, this is a single player quest, so I'm not too surprised. But yeah, his damage is overall very, 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 very damn good. But now, time to showcase him with the hybrid build. So let's get to it, boys. Um, by the way, here's how much SP Okiora had. Alright, lads, here we are back in Co-op IZ, and this is what we gave Okiora. We gave him the pill, the bait, and the Zeta pill, all with 30% SP. Now, if you guys are asking me why I chose to go for the bait instead of the Espada chair, um, keep in mind that Okiora has a second strong attack that can boost, and normally when you have attacks that can actually buff the character, 
it's always a 33% increase in the attack, defense, and the focus. So this will allow Okiwara to do a lot more crits to the point that it's actually better to run a bait over the Espada Chair if you're trying to, per se, I don't know, run the uh, Teacup or uh, Zeta Pill to basically hit the underground mob. So yeah, that's all you guys really need to know why I chose to go for this. So um, yeah. And the hybrid links, this time we gave him uh, Frenzy Biakuya, which is, by the way, 5-5 five, five with 500 SP and has low 5 SP on the Transcendent slot. He gives out Sad 18 and SAR 10%. We have Swimsuit Orihime right here, which is basically giving out FSD 20% and 10% SAR, low 5 SP, by the way. And then we have Tag Team Biakuya, which is giving out SAR 12% and 16 SAD, which is also level 5 SP. So like the links are basically transcendence. Not all at level 10, but it's still good enough to the point that I'm getting a very nice beefy SP. And with this, the Berserker is now at a good whopping 79% while the full stamina damage boost is at 45%. And for those of you guys wondering how much SP he has now, well, guess what? It's 5k spiritual pressure. Literally, we have 5,042 SP on this character which is actually pretty good considering this guy does not have Frenzy Plus 2, he has nothing too broken, and he doesn't even have the best kit that a uh, character has. But still, this is going to be very good to showcase, so let's get into it, lads. Okay, this is going to be a very fast run. Uh, this map is annoying because, like, the way of how uh, they placed the way the mobs spawn is so freaking weird. Like, hold on. You guys see, like, they spawn in front and then in back. Like, what the hell was K-Lab thinking? Was this their first IZ that they did? I don't even remember, bro. It's that badly designed. Like, look at it. I'm taking way too long to clear just because of how bad they placed the mobs here. Like, it's so stupid. It's very stupid. But anyways, yeah, the damage we're doing with this character is stupidly good. And unfortunately, it's not an infinite boost now because, like, all the links are, like, 10%. But it's still a lot better than it was before so like yeah obviously if you're gonna be running uh 14 sar links you can basically get yourself a guaranteed um you know infinite boost with this character so yeah yeah i have to wait for three seconds for the second tron attack to come back but there we go so yeah that being said we do need better hybrid links for power because like they're stacked but most of them like are 10 percent cooldown reduction link so it's like if we want the best experience with our boost characters it's gonna take a bit longer which is quite unfortunate because like if we compare them to like tech mind and all the other attributes we can basically just infinite boost just fine so like yeah but yeah other than that okior is doing a lot better than before i don't think there are that many complaints about this character minus the fact that he's just lacking havoc in my opinion if he had havoc that would have been the perfect resurrection that we could have possibly asked for like that is literally all this character needed besides berserker and there you guys go like this okior would have been pretty damn insane maybe um maybe somewhere in the honorable mentions but like god damn I still can't believe that they chose to make this Okiora just, you know, have Berserker and that's it. So, like, yeah, not even the bullet here, no Havoc, it's a bit disappointing, so, yeah. Anyways, um, let me just say this as an Okiora fanboy myself, because, like, I'm gonna be realistic with this character. I still enjoy this character. I think he's very nice, he's very good, but I just don't think he's anything crazy as most of the power characters that we have in the game. Now, if you're still lacking a very good no affiliation killer, like, I don't know, can't figure on the Shunsui or Christmas Toshiro. This is definitely a very good character to use regardless of not having a full screen third strong attack. Now, obviously, if you guys want to invest transcendence on this character, it's going to be worth it at the end of the day because you're just going to get yourself a very good power no affiliation killer all maxed out for when it comes to using him in inheritance trials. And uh, for epic raids, believe it or not, he's actually going to be a very good booster to have if you do not have a good bonus to use in epic raids matter of fact he's actually going to be very good to use in epic raids if per se we have that one situation where the bonuses are actually crap for awakened epic raids like <laughs> this character will actually be able to cover you in that instance where we have bad bonuses and you don't have a good power character to use so like hey to each their own at the end of the day i still think he's actually worth the transcendence 
Although he is a bit outdated, if you ask me. Like, even with the resurrection, he's still not hitting the top 10 power characters that we have in the game. There's just way too many good power characters to even place this character anywhere near the top 10s. Maybe honorable mentions, but like, that's basically the max where I'm gonna place the character if I were to make a top 10 power character list. So, um, yeah, that's just my overall opinion. So, yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. If you guys have actually enjoyed it, don't forget to smash that like button, share this video with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already, and hit the bell notification so that way you guys are up to date with my most recent videos, and I'm still disappointed with how Ukiora was done in terms of resurrection, so yeah. <laughs> At least he's fun to use, but they could have done it a bit better, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, y'all have a good day. I'll see you guys in the next one. There's going to be more videos coming out, so do stay tuned for that. This has been your bud, the Dash Smasher, and I am officially signing out. Take care, lads. Peace out. <laughs>